Chet Holmgren is feared to have torn ligaments in his right foot and injuries sustained on this play in last weekend's Pro-Am game as he guarded LeBron on this fast break. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. If you're new here and a sports fan who enjoys learning about anatomy and the medical side of sports injuries, then be sure and like this video and subscribe for future updates. This was the play where Chet was injured last weekend at Jamal Crawford's Pro-Am and you can see here as he's guarding LeBron, he kind of comes up limping right away after this play. He's not putting any weight down on his right foot and we saw him exit the game shortly thereafter. Of course, this game ultimately had to be canceled because of the slippery floors, which we'll talk about if that played a role here later on. The initial concern people had was for Chet's ankle, but when I first saw this play, I was really more worried about the foot, to be honest, because there really wasn't a moment where we saw his right ankle turn or get sprained. As he's coming down here, there's this one step right there, but we don't see the ankle turn over or go into much inversion. But it's this moment right here where he puts that foot behind him, and you can kind of see this little whip-like motion that takes place with his right heel right there. That just slight little shift as his foot is plantar flexed into the ground is when this injury would have occurred. We can see as the play kind of continues, his foot's already up in the air. There's no moment where he comes down and lands on LeBron. And so it really was that moment where he stepped backwards, planted that right foot right there where this injury would have occurred. I wonder if he was dealing with something coming into this game. We just saw his right ankle was taped up or wrapped or something here different than his left side. So possibly that something was bothering him a little bit before the game as well. Now we have the report about torn ligaments in his foot. It's hard to give even a speculative prognosis here because there's such a spectrum with injury severity when it comes to ligaments in the foot. Because number one, there are tons of ligaments in the foot. And these can be injuries that are as simple as a week or two, like we saw Steph Curry in the playoffs this year, to injuries that can be requiring surgery and be season ending. If we look top down here with our biodigital anatomy tool at the right foot, all of these little ligaments here connecting bones to one another are in the midfoot. And so theoretically, a midfoot or a foot ligament tear could be any one of probably dozens of ligaments sitting here in the foot. Now, of course, whenever people hear about a midfoot or a foot sprain, we worry about the Liz Frank ligament, which arguably would probably be the most concerning ligament we could see injured in the foot. The Liz Frank ligament is crucial for supporting the arch of the foot. And technically the Liz Frank is a complex of ligaments that run through the tarsal metatarsal joints. So the tarsal bones are sort of right here through the midfoot and then the metatarsals are going to be the long bones in the foot. And the ligaments connecting those two are all technically the Liz Frank ligaments, but there's one that we're classically worried about. And it's this guy right here that runs between a bone called the medial cuneiform to a bone at the base of the second metatarsal. The reason this ligament is so important is the rest of the metatarsals are connected to one another through these intermetatarsal ligaments, but there's no direct connection between the first metatarsal and the second. So what you instead have is this sort of roundabout connection from the first metatarsal to the medial cuneiform, medial cuneiform to the second metatarsal through that Liz Frank ligament, that provides that sort of roundabout stability. But whenever you go up on the ball of your foot and then push off, there's a tremendous amount of force that's imparted through that joint and through that Liz Frank ligament. As Chet takes this step backwards and right there plants with his right foot, there's going to be force that's transmitted through that tarsal metatarsal joint. And then you can see the moment after his foot plants, his heel almost drops medial. It kind of swings inward. So plant, heel swings inward. What that's gonna do when he goes to push is it's then going to put this abduction moment through the forefoot. So there's a tendency for his foot to wanna to bend out that way as he's plantar flexed. And this puts a tremendous amount of load, particularly through these midfoot ligaments. The slippery cord is going to be on everybody's mind here. And I will say that usually if the court is slippery, there's less friction. And so there might not be as much force or grip be transmitted through the foot. So instead of it, anchoring and pushing, the foot just sort of slides out of the way. So there has to be at least a little bit of grip here on Chet's shoe to allow those forces to be transmitted through the foot. Also, we don't really see his foot slide. You know, there's the brief moment kind of right there, the foot plants. Maybe there's just a little bit of shift from the court that then his shoe re-engages and that could have been what did it. So certainly possible that the wet court made a difference here, but this is an injury that we can see happen with a totally dry court. Like I said in the beginning, the recovery for this type of an injury is extremely, extremely wide ranging because these can be as mild as something like Steph Curry who had this nondescript midfoot sprain and was only out a couple of weeks to something like a true Liz Frank injury that might require surgery 
and could be season ending if it did. A Liz Frank injury that doesn't require surgery is often still on the order of weeks to months because of how important that ligament is to maintain the integrity of your foot. A final key learning point with Liz Frank injuries is they can be easy to miss because oftentimes when you go and get x-rays on your foot, your foot hurts. And so you might not put weight on your foot and then you get non-weight bearing x-rays. The problem though is you'll miss the instability between the first and second metatarsal if you aren't standing on the foot. So if you have suspicion for a midfoot injury, midfoot sprain, you should always get x-rays where the athlete is bearing weight or standing because what you'll see if there's a Liz Frank tear is these two bones right here will be split apart because that ligament's torn and so there's widening, we call it diastasis. But you'll only see it if you get weight bearing x-rays. So always get weight bearing x-rays. Once the Thunder have done more evaluation here, then we'll have a better sense of prognosis and recovery time. But until then, I hope this was still educational. But look at the play, look at some of the anatomy and biomechanics of the midfoot and learn something about what happened. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.